Hello, boys and girls. I'm Lucinda Florio. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the State House in Trenton. This is the home of our state government. It's where laws are made and where the governor works. Today, we're going to get a chance to see state government from inside the State House. As you watch, look for answers to the following questions. What does democracy mean? And how has it changed? What is representative government? And how are laws made? These are all important ideas that will help you understand how our government works. I hope you enjoy your visit to the State House. Behind this curtain is an amazing and powerful machine. On special days every year, people all across America walk in and use it. It's a voting booth. What's so amazing and powerful about voting? Well, we have a national government in Washington, a state government in Trenton, and local governments in our counties and towns. All of them begin right here with voting. Today, we're going to visit the State House in Trenton and find out what democracy means, what representative government is, and how laws are made. We're going to get a first-hand look at state government at work as we go around and about New Jersey. Our visit to the State House takes us to Mercer County. The city of Trenton is located on the Delaware River. It's been the capital of New Jersey since 1790. This building is called the State House because it's the center of state government. Think of it as the home of state government. Our first stop is the State House Rotunda. How many of you have ever had the opportunity to raise your hand and vote for something? Everybody's been able to raise their hands and vote for something. You know, people call our government a democracy. Well, what does democracy mean to you? <gasps> what about you? I think it is freedom. It's an everybody gets a say on the issue. I think it's a chance for you to vote for what you believe in. Here's another way to think of democracy. It actually comes from the Greek word demos, which means people. Our government is called a democracy because it is government by the people. But does our democracy mean government by all the people? Think about this. At one time in New Jersey history, if you didn't own property, or if you were a woman or an African-American, you were not allowed to vote. Democracy then was very different from democracy today. In our democracy, does everyone have the right to vote? For instance, you know, you have to be at least 18 years old to vote. So everyone doesn't have the right to vote. Do you think that kids should be allowed to vote? No, because they don't understand all the issues. No, because um, they vote what their parents um, vote. Yes, because we have important things to say, and I think we're important, too. Now, at what age should kids be allowed? Fourth. Fourth grade. Now, what grade are you all in? Fourth! Isn't that interesting that the appropriate grade to vote is fourth, and we're all in fourth grade? Hmm. Even if you could vote, does that mean you would vote directly on every issue? No. New Jersey voters elect people to represent them in Trenton. Some of these people are called lawmakers or legislators. They make up the branch of government known as the legislature. Today, 
Welcome to the General Assembly Chambers. Our host at the State House is Karen Poling. This House was built in 1891, and it holds Assembly members. You know, the legislature is broken into two parts, the Senate and the General Assembly. And you're in the General Assembly. The men and women who sit downstairs are called Assembly members. And those Assembly members help make laws. The things that go on in this building affect every part of your life. Everything from if you have to wear bicycle helmets to ride your bike at night, to how long the milk is going to sit in the supermarket shelves before you can drink it. Our government is broken up into legislative districts so that you all live in a legislative district and you have two assembly members representing you. Every district in New Jersey is represented in Trenton. Instead of voting on every issue, voters in each district elect two members of the General Assembly and one senator to vote for them. This is what representative government means. Please rise. When a senator or a member of the General Assembly proposes a new law, it's known as a bill and given a name and a number. An important part of the process before a bill becomes a law is the debate, where legislators argue whether the law would be a good one. Children, welcome to the Senate chamber. This is where senators vote on bills. They do a lot of other business, but they vote here. Just because the senator wants a bill doesn't mean it's passed. The other senators have to agree. Suppose you're a senator. Senator Holly, say you had an idea for a bill. And say that bill says that you're going to abolish homework. No more homework, ever. Now, just because she thought of that does not make it a law. Senators just don't come in here and vote. They come in and they discuss it first, because for every senator that thinks it's a good idea, there's a senator who thinks it's a bad one. Senator Holly, would you please stand up and tell us why you think that homework should be abolished? My name is Senator Holly, and I think that we should not have homework, because by the time you get older, your brain is rotted, and you have a lot of work ahead of you so that I think that you should not have homework. My name is Senator Carey, and I think that we should have homework because by the time you're older, you need an education and you won't be able to compete in the real world. My name is Senator Chirag, and I think we should have homework because we go to school and we learn, but if you have homework, we'll be able to understand it more and know it more. I'm Senator Melissa, and I don't think that we should have homework because you won't have as much time for activities. Your homework will take up your time, and you can get frustrated, and you won't be happy with it. Thank you, Senator. Now, we've just had a big debate. Some people think we shouldn't have homework. Some people think that we should. And now the senators are going to vote. So you've heard the arguments on both sides of the issues. All those in favor of no more homework, raise your hands. The bill passes if more than wow, half the Senate votes in favor that's of it. That's a good show of hands. How many do want homework? Looks to me like the no homework bill has passed. It's a narrow margin, but it has passed. But that doesn't make it a law yet. It must be passed by the Assembly, too and then go on to the governor. The governor is the head of the executive branch, which executes or carries out the laws passed by the legislature. All the voters in New Jersey directly elect the governor. That wasn't always the case. Early governors, such as the state's first governor, William Livingston, were elected by the legislature. When a bill comes to the governor's office, the governor has three choices. Sign the bill, which makes it a law. Veto the bill, which means saying no to the bill. Or conditionally veto the bill, which means change it a little and then I'll sign it. For example, signing our bill if it's changed to no homework except on Fridays. 
Welcome to the governor's outer office. The no homework bill has passed both houses, the Senate and the General Assembly. It's now been brought forth to the governor. Governor Marianne, what are you going to do with the bill? I'm going to sign it. The no homework bill is passed. It is now law. <laughs> Only a small proportion of bills actually become laws. In one two-year period, more than 9,000 bills were introduced, but less than 700 became laws. The New Jersey State House is a very busy place. about our state government, including three very important points. That democracy means government by the people, but not necessarily government by everyone. That we don't vote on every issue, but elect people to represent us. Raise your hand. And that a bill must pass both houses of the legislature and be signed by the governor to become a law. While this may seem confusing, remember, it all comes down to this. We elect representatives to vote for us. That's what democracy is all about. Funding for this program was provided by Beneficial Management Corporation, a subsidiary of Beneficial Corporation, which has been providing banking, insurance, and consumer financial services to America since 1914.